Now we're going to talk about building a three axis mechanism out of servos that will fit one of these skulls that came from this one came from Menards. You can also buy these at Home Depot. Pick these up on closeout. Now the beauty of this mechanism is it's design I designed it to be compact and I also designed it so most people can build this with basic tools. Um, there's only one component that would have to be built and it just uses a uh, angle bracket or a piece of metal from a hardware store and then we make this piece for mounting and we'll show where this goes later on. Um, but once again, a drill press or just a drill and some little bit of care in, in making the holes, it should line up and everything should work for you. So, I guess let's get talking about the servos. These servos came from Amazon. And these are Hobby Park HDR 31 uh, 351M. And we're going to use two of these for this. Also, we're going to use this. Uh, It's a DS3218MG. This also came from Amazon. These are all digital servos. And uh, the beauty of this is you'll be able to mount that into these, as I said, or you can mount that into pretty much anything you want because I've set it up to have a pretty simple uh, mounting uh, structure to move whatever you want in the three axis. So let's get started on showing how to put this together. I also want to note that when you're putting this together you're going to want your controller ready and set it up so that you have a signal so you can center the servos. We always want to center our servos while we're putting this together. We don't want to put it together, find out that everything is off, and then have to go back and fix it. So have it ready for while you're doing this. Right now I'm using uh, the new output on the Pi with a hat and set it up so that I'm centering on this. So let's get talking about the mechanism itself. These servos come with some brackets and we're going to be using these, we're going to be modifying one. And they start out like this. You're going to also want to use one of these uh, for getting our pattern here for mounting this piece that I said we're going to have to make. We're going to use the holes on this end here to make come up with this pattern. So the first thing we need to do is modify one of these into this. What we're going to do is, now all of this has been pre-built so that I don't have to walk you through all the boring steps. So we're going to take one of these, use a stepper drill, we're going to drill it out. We're going to open that up so that it fits over the servo like this. And you'll see why in a minute. 
then I'm going to take this we're going to line our other bracket up and mark it. And make extra holes here. And I also go in and I countersink these a little bit. And we're going to want to drill this hole out to quarter inch. So we end up something like this. So, to get started, I'm going to use a coupler nut that we get from any hardware store and a quarter 20 bolt. Zinc plated would be nice and, because this whole thing can also go in these skulls outdoors and it'll be just fine. I'm going to start here and install this on this bracket. This is going to be our mounting point. We can take this, put a quarter twenty threaded rod in here and bend it into the neck of the skeleton that you have. Uh, I put a right angle build and a couple of screws and come out the back of the skeleton for a good mounting point. But, and then I modify the neck piece. And then this is what everything mounts on. And that's where we start. Next, we want to take this servo. I am going to want it In this orientation for my use. So we force it in here and of course we're going to have to bend these back. Now at this point we want to mount this servo to this bracket. And this is going to be our lower assembly. And this is going to be our uh, our nod servo. So once we have this, we can set this aside and then work on our rotate servo. And that would be this one here. So with this, we want to set this bracket up with this so that we are going to be going like this with these two brackets. And you'll see why we want to do it in this fashion a little bit. So I'm going to take that and these servos have a pivot point on one end and then our output on the other. We'll put our pivot point in here and this where you want to start centering. Plug this in. And the servo is centered. this 
<clears throat> like this. So we need to set these up. roughly like this. We're going to do this with the output shaft facing in this direction. This is going to be our top. Now we can slide this mechanism in here. Really I could have done this uh, a little differently but Now, we get our screws in the top. So when we're done, we want this bracket to look like this. We want the four holes here on the bottom. We want this to be at an exact right angle when it's centered to this bracket. Also don't forget to put this in like I did. Okay, through a little magic here, we got that installed in there. That holds that pivot point from being able to pull out. So, we now have this. Alright, from here, we want to center our other servo. get our output shaft mounted up and down. Now, one thing to point out on these servos is these are designed with 25 teeth, an odd number of teeth, so that you can rotate this around and get slightly different positions depending on where you put it. So to make some fine adjustments. So we want to find that spot where we're pretty much up and down Like that. We're going to put our rotating one, rotating point on the other side. And we're not going to finish. Finish. We're not going to forget this screw this time. Although it really doesn't matter because we have access to this one. So now this going to face forward in our skull. This faces back. I'm going to put this in here. Get to this point. Now we'll talk about this bracket later, but if you get more experience with this, this can be mounted before this is put on makes it slightly easier but let's continue on here so with this we're going to want to make sure we have short screws installed in here so that they don't bind up as you can see tolerances are pretty tight here 
So I have a long screw here to go into the center here, into the servo shaft. Then we're going to install some short screws. Now I don't install all four here. I found that it really isn't that necessary. So I just mount this with two screws, one top, one bottom. Check for centering. There we go. So at this point, we have our nod and our rotate or pan servos mounted in this mechanism. And this part is ready to go. Next, we want to talk about this piece. This piece was made with screws here and a bend. And these screws as tight as you can get to this bend. We use this as a template to make these holes. This is a swivel hub from Servo City. This goes in here and we need to have a hole in the middle for clearance. This doesn't have to be perfect. You can see it's not that pretty. I didn't I did this all basic just like you would with you know your basic tools at home, uh, just a regular cordless drill and so on and a vise. Uh, this was bent across a vise and I used this plate for marking my holes here. Open this up with a Dremel, so some clearance here for all of this. This is what our skull is going to rotate on for its tilt. So this point we can take this part and mount it on here. And you are going to need to shorten these screws. Uh, the best way to do that is with a wire cutter. If you ever looked at the base of a wire cutter, uh, it has a you know, wire cutter and stripper combination. They have little holes around the, uh, the center with markings. These are 632 screws. You can thread these in there and then squeeze that handle and it shears off the end. And so you can shorten those like that. I'm going to mount this. The best practice for doing stuff like this too is never fully tighten this stuff down until you've got all the screws in. Then you go through and tighten it. As here you can see I recess these. So here's my mechanism. Now, like I said, we use this as when we make this bracket to line this up. The length on this and this here is determined by this here. When we make this bracket, we're going to be mounting it here. We want this to line up at the center of this servo. What this does is this makes sure that our rotation point is right here rotating on this. This is rotating this way. Now this is our third axis. 
And we're setting it up so that the rotation of this is going to be also down, right down the center of that. So all of our movement is going to be centered right over this shaft right here. Now, there's a bunch of screws and stuff that come with these servos. We're going to use those to mount this. Now, you also notice a screw here with this nut we've had to make clearance for on the back side here. You may want to make sure that this is fairly tight. And see, this doesn't freely spin, but it also doesn't wobble around either. This doesn't have to freely spin. You don't want it to because all of our mechanism, all the energy and movement is going to be passing through this. So we don't want this very loose. Um, I don't think this one, but I think a few of them might, may have taken them apart and put some uh, silicone gel in there just to, you know, a little lubrication and then tighten it down. We're not rotating this anything more than this, so it doesn't need much. or uh, lubrication or movement, anyhow. So this we get from Servo City as well. This is what they call a pattern plate. And I've taken this and cut this in this configuration. And you'll see how we mount this on here. But we want to mount this on, have this on here, like this. We're going to be putting a servo on here to allow this to move this way. So, this servo is going to end up going on here. And it's going to be attaching like that with this ball joint on both. You can get these at a hobby sh shop that sells uh, radio controlled car or airplane stuff. That's pretty common for them. You can see how short I have it. Now I played with the angle here. This, when it's centered, plug it in. Roughly that angle, and it's like that because of the angles we have here. The movement is fairly even from one side to the other, starting off here, not straight up and down. If it went straight up and down, then our movement, we're going to have more movement one direction than the other when we have our input, and we'll have to compensate. We'll try not to do that. Like I said, I found this angle to be roughly, you know, pretty effective. It does what we need. You can see where we're mounted here on that. And how we install this is with double-sided tape here. And as you can see, I've cut the mounting holes, the tabs off of here to make for clearance. And we'll see that in a few minutes. started off with this servo horn and we grind this piece off the back as you can see because we need to have clearance here I just use this here this command strip 
seems to work fine. That's so all we need to hold this on here. I want to clean our surfaces first. Use a little rubbing alcohol here. This is going to mount like this with wire down and the arm up on this mechanism. So I'm clean this surface. experience with that stuff is well, first off you, if you need to redo anything you can't clean it off that well it's a mess this comes off clean and the thicker foam allows for too much movement in the servo now we want to line this top and bottom and we're going to set it back a little from the other servo I don't want it sticking out a ton. We need enough clearance on the back side for a screw to come through. I want that arm to be able to pass through there. And you'll see with uh, what we got here, why we want to do it this way. That is on there. Now, for a safety measure, you could possibly, you know, put a thin one or two uh, zip ties through here to clamp those together. But I haven't really found much of a need for that. So let's get this chunk out of the way. So, when this all goes together, I'm going to put a couple of screws in here, temporary. Hold this, and you can see that this is what we're going to mount to. And this rotates. Temporarily put this screw in. You can see this servo then moves this tilts. So center it. When we're centered, we want to see this vertical. It's going to be a straight up and down point. Now you can get in here and adjust that. Play with this a little bit until you get this straight. This is the best time to get this all straightened out before you get your skull all together. So, we have a nearly completed unit here. A little cable routing. Take a wire tie and zip tie those together so that doesn't rub down here. That's going to move like this. That's going to be our rotate. Show you our tilt. Here's our nod. So, now next, we want to put this on that skull. How I've done this
Here's one of those skulls. This one came from Menards. You can see a couple holes where I was playing around with the, where I wanted to locate it. The battery box here, you're going to have a couple of dividers in between the batteries. So take a pliers or something, you just go in there and twist and break it off. So you have a nice flush surface here. This is what we got on the inside. You might need to notch in this area a little bit to clear that servo. You'll see once you have it together you might have to take it apart to make some clearances phone call interruption. So we have this, we've cleared this out, now we need to take the Dremel tool. We go in here and we have to open up a slot here so that this can pass through. And a small slot down here. We'll take that our terminal tool and go in here and grind this out, grind that out. Then we can pass our plate through here like this. And that's how it fits in there. So what we're gonna do then take this plate and mount it on here, the end of this servo arm, making sure we got clearance. This whole mechanism goes into our skull like this. Now I use that plate to get some holes in there. What we want to do is get a screw in here. up one hole. No matter which one. Just get one to get started. And from here we can take and then move this around until our other hole lines up. There we go. This now will allow for our tilt. You can see it's a little tight here. I sometimes take these and bend that in. It brings this down a little bit and so on. We have a mounting point. Rotate nod and tilt. You're going to want to take and neaten up your wires. Like I said I usually take a zip tie. Tie these two tight together so that that has decent clearance here. Now you can take your quarter twenty rod, get a length of it, you figure out the distance you need for your particular skull and I put a bend at the end of it and I put a nut and washer where I can drill through the back of the skeleton pass it through with a nut and washer on the inside and one on the outside then I have a good 
rod that goes up the middle of that skeleton that won't rotate. On this end, you're just going to use a double nut system. You screw this on. You can up and down because you have plenty of room to do that. And then tighten the, the two against each other up here to hold this from turning. That's all that's needed for to keep it from rotating. And that completes this part. Now, I use, you know, on the front, I just use a couple of LEDs for the eyes. Do this with a four wire connector and an F amp. So the F amp will push my data, it's after the last pixel, so that I can travel down the wire to the next skull. Each skull has about 12 and a half feet of wire. And so I want to be able to get that data to the next one. So that's the point of this for my eyes on this skull. The uh, servo for the mouth, I just use one of these mini servos. And I will double side tape again on this shelf here, drill a couple of holes and some zip ties to hold that in place. Bring your rod down through the bottom of that skull, drill a hole here and you make a, what we refer to as a Z-bend, passes through there. And you can get these uh, connectors at uh, the hobby store as well. And you the rod passes through here, that's on that servo arm, and you can lock this down so you can make fine adjustments. So when you do this, this servo wants to be, you want this to set to the low end coming from X lights with no signal. And you want to set that not centered but off in a closed position and get your jaw set closed with X lights add zero. So when you add light or you know a signal, it opens up. So you want your natural point to be closed. Servo arm is going to move about 60 degrees, so we're off slightly there. And the servo is going to move to that point with this full on signal or 100% to open our jaw. And that's what we do there to get our, our jaw movement. The other thing you're going to want to make sure is on these skulls I have to cut out all this in the front and the back to make clearance on these servos this sticks out forward. I really wish there was a way I could do that without having that sticking out but it's the best I could do and if somebody else comes up with an idea of this and still keep it compact I'm all for it. I'd, I'm, I'd be interested in hearing about it. But right now this is the best I was able to do because that's sticking out and that's rotating inside that skull, I've had to take the jaw and cut it back and take the plastic out that was there holding that and put a couple of small pieces of plastic to hold that jaw for its rotating point to make as much width in here as possible for this. Once that's done, I haven't had much of a problem. Then, once you're at this point with this whole skull, you have this mounted on your skeleton. The whole thing can be put together like this. With your four screws in the back. 
and your battery case cover. And you have a completed skull with full movement. So we have our rotate. We have our nod. We have our tilt. And our jaw movement. And that would complete this mechanism. Hope that helps some people. And uh, I guess I'm probably going to get a bunch of questions. <laughs>